The same team from Sony Computer Entertainment that created the 2001 fantasy title Ico brings more of their epic visual style and innovative gameplay to Shadow of the Colossus, an addictive adventure with bosses larger than anything you've ever experienced on the PS2. The beauty of Shadow of the Colossus is in the simplicity of its gameplay. Your only objectives throughout the entire game are to search and destroy 16 colossi represented by two rows of statues. You have to locate them in a specific order, and the game gives you cryptic clues as to their appearance and location. Whenever your character is in direct sunlight, you can raise his sword and use it as a compass to reveal the direction you need to travel in. And each time you win a boss battle, you're automatically teleported back to the center of the map. Despite the repetitiveness of each mission, killing one Colossus is so much fun, it makes you want to find the next one right away. And the overall quest can last eight to nine hours. It takes a long time to figure out how to get on board and take each giant down. To help you get around, you have a trusty stallion to ride and jump off of to reach certain areas. Getting on his saddle can be frustrating sometimes because you need to be right next to the horse and stand completely still before pressing the jump button. This can put you in dangerous situations because it prevents you from getting on your horse in a hurry. You only have two weapons, a bow and a sword. You use the bow to hit key targets or just get each giant's attention. You use the sword as a radar to find each colossus and locate their weak points. Once you reach them, you have to hold on with the R1 button and plunge your sword into each bright blue mark. You press square to raise the sword and hold it to charge up your strike. Then you hit square again to stab. When you're staring into a geyser of black blood and being thrown back and forth, it can be difficult to figure out when to hold on long enough to attack. The most enjoyable aspect of Shadow of the Colossus is climbing up and swinging from each creature's body as they scream and struggle. You stay on board as long as you keep holding on to the R1 button. The strength of your grip is indicated by a circular meter that gradually gets smaller and smaller. This meter also represents your breath when you're swimming underwater. The L1 button targets each Colossus, keeping your perspective locked onto them wherever they go. This not only helps you in combat, but creates some unbelievable angles that effectively demonstrate just how small you are compared to your skyscraper-sized opponents. Shadow of the Colossus is presented at a mind-blowing scale, from the distant mountains you can see across the open fields, to the earth spinning around below you as your character narrowly clings to the top of each Colossus. There are no loading times anywhere in the entire game, leaving you free to explore whether you're searching for your next target or just galloping around. The areas are a combination of gorgeous natural settings and ancient structures that are crumbling to pieces. Because these massive environments are being rendered on a PS2, the textures are fuzzy and the areas lack color and definition. This doesn't matter though, due to a motion blur effect which makes moving the camera and sensing the power of each colossus very realistic. There's also a lighting blur in certain areas that can blind you with sunlight, and clouds of dust and dirt that can fill the screen. The frame rate can get choppy, but is rarely distracting. At its worst, it merely adds to the grand scale of the game. You have a lot of freedom when moving your camera, whether you're watching an in-game cutscene or you have your perspective locked onto a Colossus in battle. This allows you to see more, but the camera control can get a little loose. Since there's only one playable character, his animation is extremely detailed. Every movement he makes from running to shooting his bow on horseback to jumping on or off each Colossus is smooth and expressive. And the movement of each monster you face is fluid and extremely intimidating. It's scary to stare at a colossus as he brings down his sword crashing on top of you, or chases you as you run for your life. The appearance, size, environment, and strategy of each colossus battle is unique. Just when you master the ability to fight one beast, the next one requires a completely different method of attack.
The main character, a nameless young hero, has traveled far and wide to a forsaken land in hopes of reviving a young girl trapped in an eternal sleep. To do this, an ethereal voice commands you to destroy 16 colossi. Other than tell you how to locate and identify each one, he gives you advice on how to destroy them if you have trouble figuring it out on your own. But these tips are still vague enough to leave you a small amount of satisfaction when you realize what you have to do. Unfortunately, when you reach the finale, little of the main character's backstory is explained, and a couple of random elements are introduced. Anyone who's played Ico might appreciate these subtle references, but newcomers may find the ending unsatisfying. Despite its simple objectives and empty environments, Shadow of the Colossus is extremely addicting. After you destroy the first massive monster, it's hard to stop until you've taken down all 16 of them. The world may lack texture, but the art design is beautifully inspired, and the size and scope of everything from the castles to the creatures has to be seen to be believed. <laughs> 